This is a great moment. I'm actually in the air and I'm on my way in that wonderful, thank you very much, Zen netherworld between the life you leave behind and the place you're traveling to. I am off to one of the great cities of the world. It's being described as a dream of Manhattan rising out of the South China Sea. I know this trip will bring me great fortune and I expect to spend a small one as well. When I land, I'll be in Hong Kong. Hong Kong, which means fragrant harbor, sits nestled in Eastern Asia, bordering the southeast coast of China's Guangdong province at the mouth of the Pearl River. It consists of Kowloon, Hong Kong Island, the New Territories, and hundreds of outlying islands. fortunate that the hotel spa is right across the hall from my suite. How nice is that? Anyway, it was a relatively painless 17-hour flight on Cathay Pacific. Nonetheless, it's a 12-hour time difference, and I want to be energized while I'm in Hong Kong because I have a pretty frenetic schedule, and it's a 24-hour city. So I'm about to take the anti-jet lag treatment. You have hands like weapons. Did you train with Jackie Chan or something? <laughs> oh, what kind of massage is this? That's the uh, Chinese acupressure massage. Uh -huh. But uh, I use my finger instead of the needles. Ooh, yeah. that's good. <laughs> yeah. So now I work uh, on your back. OK. Yeah. What's all that cracking? That's your nox. <laughs> my nox. Yeah, your muscle get tense, so the blood circulation's block. Mm -hmm. So then you will have some knocks, but that's normal. Everybody have some. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, how do your feet know what to do? Your feet are like hands. <laughs> You're like a feather. Oh. Okay, open your mouth. Okay. Are you okay? I'm fabulous. This will be attractive. It's a good look for me. Is this a, a mask? Yes. Do I look beautiful yet? Yeah. After oh, that, I'm sure. so beautiful. I look very beautiful. Go away. <laughs> Do you walk on my face now? <laughs> you feel pain or something? No, no. No? It's wonderful. I won't have jet lag. I may not even remember my name. Phoebe the masseuse was a powerhouse. Oh. I am now ready to fully experience Hong Kong. Even after its handover from British to Chinese rule in 1997, Hong Kong remains the fast-paced, westernized, cosmopolitan place that it was before. But at the city's core lies a rich culture and traditions that couldn't be more Chinese. It seems that East does not clash with West, but it blends with it, creating something unique and very appealing. It's a wonderful place to launch a travel program. It has energy and beauty and luxury, and above all, the new and the exotic. There is so much to learn about China, one of the oldest and most complex cultures in the world, and much to learn about my destiny.
Feng Shui has become very popular in the West over the last few years, mostly for decorating houses. In Hong Kong, it is part of the culture and common practice to consult a Feng Shui master before getting married, putting up a building, or launching a new venture. They all need to be executed with careful determination of auspicious dates and the alignment of qi or energy. Well, it would be ignorant and rude of me not to take advantage of all this knowledge, so I arranged a consultation with a geomancer named Raymond Lowe. The Chinese always say, destiny comes first, uh, luck comes second, and feng shui comes third. It's the Chinese belief everything has a good start, uh, so therefore, the most common thing people will do is, you have to select an auspicious state to do the openings. So therefore, we have an almanac, specially designed to do this. Then we will look up what is the birthday, what is the auspicious element. So we pick the good day for them. So I'm September 5th, 53. I th I'm a snake. So this is the calendar to convert your birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. So we call this the four pillars of destiny. All your life is here. My uh, whole life's there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, Raymond, what's going to happen? <laughs> so basically, this is the year, mm -hmm. the month, mm -hmm. the day, and the hour. Uh, so yeah. therefore, you are an earth girl. Yeah. So uh, what is Earth Girl? Earth is firm, steady kind of people, uh, but you are not the, the mountain kind of Earth, you are the garden Earth, so therefore you are moderate, peaceful, intellectual kind of people. Yeah. And you are very smart, very intelligent, because you have a lot of metal. Uh, because Earth produces metal, you produce something, that means you are creative, very, have a lot of creativity. Raymond, right? do you say this to all the girls? No, 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 no. Just no. Me. no. Raymond explained that any new venture in Hong Kong is kicked off with a blessing ceremony and then celebrated with a banquet dinner. But what to wear? When you pick a good element, good color, fire color is good. <clears throat> yes, red color is good, purple color is good, pink color is good. And so therefore, when you go to say what color you go to attend your ceremony, purple or red, or red is best. Red. I've got, I got a red, red, yeah, red yeah, dress, yeah. that's uh -huh. what I gotta do. So, I'm off to buy myself a fiery banquet dress. Imagine shopping on my first day. Hong Kong is a shopper's paradise. They have every conceivable specialty market, from electronics to birds and on and on. And it's all tax and duty free. But for the high end, either a fancy schmancy designer label or made to measure in 24 hours, there is no place like Hong Kong's central district. This is the historic Petter Building in the central on Hong Kong Island, and it's here I'm gonna find a traditional Chinese dress. Lydia Reeve is the director of Blanc de Chine, and I, I think I want everything in the store. Well, There's some extraordinary, look at, I mean, this silk is extraordinary. It is, it is. Don't you think it looks like leather? Yes. That's why we call it leather silk. But you probably know it as a, you know, another name. It's mud silk. Mud silk. But it's mud silk is very precious and very famous. Yes, it is. Oh. And there's varieties of mud silk. Yeah. But I, I probably need a chung sam, which I, to wear to a banquet. Yes. Uh, well, here. This <laughs> is what you have to choose from. Oh, these are wonderful. So I should just try on a few. Don't you think? I think so. The name for these traditional Chinese dresses actually means robe of the Manchurians, although most people think of them as robe of Susie Wong when they became a lot shorter and tighter. I'm looking for the and middle this is ground. An embroidery one. I'll try them all. I love Chinese style clothes. Let's just say that my collection now is almost big enough to donate to a museum. Perfect. <laughs> Must have. Must have. Must have. <laughs> There's an outdoor escalator in the middle of Central. You might imagine it out of that Simpsons episode with the escalator that goes nowhere and people just fall off when they reach the top. Okay, here they don't. 
is the only covered escalator in the world. It's in the middle of the street. It's called the Central Walkway and Escalator, and it's a system of 23 of these things that go up, up, up from the central to mid-level to help people who live way the heck up on the peak get home. Well, it's been an action-packed day. Definitely time now for a pick-me-up. And there's nothing like a luxurious cup of tea. Perfect, look at that, scones, cucumber sandwiches. I mean, there, there really aren't that many remnants that I can see of the British colonial past here. Left-hand drive, you know, the roads, maybe government systems, but this, is probably one of the best. This is high tea at the fabulous Peninsula Hotel, which is probably one of the great hotels of the world. This episode of Valerie Pringle has left the building was produced in association with the Hong Kong Tourism Board. to be in 21st century Hong Kong, right on Victoria Harbor in the middle of this, practicing movements written for a book called Earlier Heaven Movements in the 9th century by a Taoist philosopher, learning strength through softness, becoming energized, balanced, stronger, and yet feeling like a complete klutz. Now this is grabbing a bus to Wayside, and now we go on. Tai Chi is the most popular martial art in the world. This is a free class taught twice a week, and on my second morning here, I've joined the legion of practitioners all over Hong Kong who go through their daily exercises that are based on the movements of animals defending themselves. A bird showing its wings. It helps Next the body in a multitude of ways, not to mention balancing my yin and yang. A flying eagle. Well, one thing about Tai Chi first thing in the morning is you work up a good appetite. And my guide, Nevin Lim and I, are just gonna go and have a little breakfast, breakfast dim sum, at the Superstar restaurant. Hong Kong has about 7 million people and about 10,000 restaurants. That's the highest ratio of people to eateries in the world. Eating is one of the city's great pastimes and it's a big communal event. Someone once told me on a business trip to Hong Kong, each meeting scheduled involved a meal. By the end of the day, she had had eight meetings, eight meals of about eight courses each. No wonder they're so good at made to measure clothes. Dim sum means touch the heart, and these delicious little steamed snacks do that. But where are all those crabby women pushing trolleys around the room? That was a traditional style. Yeah. All high class dim sum restaurants now are served to table, but you do have to do all the labor. Fantastic. Tell me protocol. Do I take one piece at a time? Do I put it on my plate? Do I put it in my bowl? Put it in your bowl, usually, and from take the bowl. Take the spoon out? You don't need the spoon unless it's something with liquid. So I just pick a few. That's right. I just put them in my bowl. That's yeah. a sticky one. Right. Those are savory items. Dim sum are divided into savory and the sweets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have some sweet here, I'll but you try later. the savory. Right. That's delicious. Mm. May I have a shrimp? 
Is it just rude? You just keep reaching over and getting them and... Nothing is rude on a Chinese table. <laughs> Nothing is rude. That was the whole thing about Chinese food. You don't have to worry about table manner. You can, you, you can eat with your mouth open. I'm not supposed to look at you. No one look at you when you eat. Enjoy yourself. Use your chopstick, use your knife, use your fork, use your hand, as a matter of fact, if that seems to be the easiest for you. Yeah. you see, just enjoy your food. We place our attention onto making food delicious and present it well, you see, not into table manner. You see, sometimes the old traditional Chinese put their feet up when they eat. The you main thing is feet. to enjoy your enjoy food. Enjoy yourself. Just get it in your mouth. This is a great breakfast. Mm. Breakfast of champions. I didn't realize the national religion of China is Taoism. I thought it was Buddhism, although both faiths dovetail and also shelter Confucianism as well. The 600 or so temples and monasteries and shrines in Hong Kong are used regularly by worshippers who leave nothing to chance. Everything from daily life to special events has a prayer ritual to keep the gods on your side to achieve the ultimate goals of good fortune and luck, which they call Joss. Wong Tai Sin was a simple shepherd boy who lived hundreds of years ago and became a Taoist god. He was known for healing the sick and aiding the needy. In 1915, there was a father and son who brought his portrait from mainland China here. They built this temple in his honor. And as you can see, people flock here with their jaw sticks. They're looking for blessings to be bestowed and divine guidance. In fact, what they're asking for most often is money. You burn jaw sticks, which look and smell like incense, in bundles of three, signifying heaven, hell, and mankind. And if you want, you can make offerings of fruit and roasted pork. What are these people doing? Shaking cups of sticks until one falls out. Well, it turns out they're asking questions of the gods and they're getting a number which a local fortune teller will interpret for them. Hey, I've got a question. There's a whole mall full of fortune tellers right next to the temple who will read your number, your face, or even your palm. I look for the English speaking booth. numbers I shook. Oh. I want to know if this new program, this show, this series that I'm going to do will be a success. Mm -hmm. Priscilla, the fortune teller, looks at my number and tells me the story of a young fisherman who finds that he can catch more fish with a net than a single line. So, I interpret this to mean that I'm on the right track with a TV series over, say, just one program. But there's more. Okay. So, what do my palms tell you? So I'm told that right now my luck and determination are strong, and it's a good time for starting something new. Well, I'm not dumb enough to ignore the counsel of the advisors I've met or centuries of Chinese tradition. So if an opening celebration is the route to good fortune, bring it on. This is one of the great sightseeing bargains in the world. For about 40 cents you can ride up top, 30 cents you can ride below across Victoria Harbour. Fabulous skyline. But it isn't just for tourists. You know, I have a friend who lived here for years and she said every time she got on the Star Ferry she would think, I live in the greatest city in the world. The Star Ferry goes back and forth across Victoria Harbour from Kowloon to Hong Kong.
These ferries have been going continuously here since 1888, but people who've lived in Hong Kong a long time will remember it as being a longer ride. Uh, part of that might be just how memory is. Part of it is true because of landfill. They filled in so much of the harbor for buildings uh, that the ride now is just seven minutes across. I'm in Hong Kong Park to visit the World War II Memorial, which is something I enjoy doing. It's sad, but I think it's important, and I think it's appropriate to respect what was done for us. The fall of Hong Kong was quick. The battle lasted only 18 days. The Canadian and British troops defending this island were outnumbered by the Japanese 10 to 1. They surrendered on Christmas Day, 1941. This is a statue to John Osborne, who was a sergeant major with the Winnipeg Grenadiers. And as the plaque points out very touchingly, to all the men and women, service and civilian of all races and creeds who performed acts of self-sacrifice and gallantry, which is what he did. He and his men were being attacked by the Japanese who were throwing grenades at them. And he was throwing them right back to the Japanese until one came that he couldn't reach at which point this 42-year-old father of six hurled his own body over that grenade. He saved his man, but he lost his own life. And for that, he was awarded the Victoria Cross. I always loved that children's story, Ping the Duck, about life on Chinese fishing boats, and was amazed by the stories you'd hear in school about people who would live, for example, in Hong Kong Harbor, on their boats from birth to death with their toddlers tethered, and this was their whole life. They never even touched land. And here I am in Aberdeen Haiphong Shelter, and there still are like 4,000 boats, and this is where people live, although it is a little more modern now. Great, great. Hello. 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 I'm Valerie. Hi. Thank you very much oh. for letting us come on your boat. Hi. How are you? I'm Valerie. From Canada. Thank you, Can I can I see your house? Can I see? Can I see? Yeah. And I go here. Thank you very much. Ah, <laughs> you're so nice. You're so nice. God, this is great. Holy cow! So we see. This see, this is what you hear. This is like all these modern accoutrements. You know, washer dryer. They got the TV going. TV. It's good. Refrigerator. Cooking refrigerator. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, you got the fridge, you got the eggs, got the dog. See a nice dog? I hope. Wow. Well, you got hot dogs in there? Hot dogs in the freezer. Fantastic. This is great. Do you like TV? Wow. And the bedrooms? Here, come on in. Let's go in the bedroom. And of course, the cell phone. Guess the air conditioner for the fan. Aww. The 
wedding photos, too, are in there. It's great. Is that the bathroom? Toilet. 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 And then... Toilet. toilet. Yeah, toilet, toilet there. Toilet. Two toilet. Here's his brother coming and his grandmother. Hello. Hey, come here. That's very beautiful. With your grandfather? Papa. Yeah, Papa and Mama? Silo. T.T. Yeah. Well, this is a great home. And, and thank you so much for letting me see this. What a wonderful opportunity and visit. How charming to be invited by that family into their floating world. And not only that, there's souvenir shopping on the sampan. Very cute. Watches and purses. It's pretty cute. <laughs> you don't laugh at me! Well, I'm a happy camper. Even more famous than the giant floating restaurants in Aberdeen are the markets and restaurants in Lei Yu Mun Fishing Village on the Kowloon side. Here, you actually pick your dinner in one of the many shops. You can choose the lobster from a Jules Verne novel. Sorry, you'll be glad to know I can't eat you. You're too big. What do you think? Or would be really the grouper the size of a Cadillac. Oh my God! It's the size of my chocolate lab. You want to go? No. Danger. Why is it dangerous? Because of bite, you know? Oh, Jesus, Murphy. Right or something a little like tamer. So can I pick the scallop? Yes, this is your scallops. Yeah, and they're not wiggling and they're not like breathing. And, and then a steam with garlic, the garlic like a scallop. This garlic is the scallop. Lights, the best one. Okay. Yeah. How many? Oh, I don't know, four. Four. Four, two. Four, two, right? Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Then you find a restaurant to cook it for you. There are my scallops. Yes, there's one scallops. Steamed scallops with Chinese garlic. Yeah, Chinese garlic and scallion. Beer and scallions. Oh, that looks fabulous. Should I just yeah, take I it like this? Do I do this? Yeah. All right. We know what that looked like mere moments ago. How cool is this? Sitting on the South China Sea, just eating a scallop you just picked. Oh, golly. Forty-five minutes from one of the most frenetic cityscapes on Earth, over a few bridges and a highway, and you're on Lantau, the largest of Hong Kong's islands, and what feels like a different planet, a green planet. People think of Hong Kong as this mega city, but it is an archipelago. It's made up of more than 260 islands. Some of them still very remote. They have beautiful beaches like this with the nice sand that washes down from the Pearl River. Lantau Island is twice the size of Hong Kong Island, and it's home to the ultra-modern new airport and soon the newest Disney World. So you can't say it's undeveloped, but it's still mostly wild and untouched. And you really get a sense of this when you visit the traditional fishing village of Tai O, which is so ramshackle and quaint, Disney couldn't dream it up. Yes, there are people here. Hello. Hi. Hello. Oh, he's very cute. This is very jungly. Bamboo jungle here with some cool banana trees right there. But I guess a lot of people live in these shacks. Corrugated steel or something. Huh. It's so remote. 
Look at this. This is good. It's got to be an outhouse. It's the bathroom. Look, I guess you just close the door and squat right over the river. And it's two-seater. Apparently, most of this village, which is pretty derelict, is scheduled to be demolished just because it is in such horrible shape. And people will probably end up, remarkably enough, in the complete opposite, a government housing like that. It's a dragon oh, size? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to be in the picture? One, two, three, smile. Aren't you cute? <laughs> Very cute. The man who wrote the book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance said that the Buddha, the Godhead, resides quite as comfortably in the circuits of a digital computer or the gears of a cycle transmission as he does at the top of a mountain. Well, I think the mountaintop sure suits him. Isn't he beautiful? Shrouded in cloud, big Buddha. I mean, it is such a great thing to do. It is so worth seeing, something I've always wanted to do. He's absolutely huge. It's the world's largest outdoor Buddha, built by the monks at the Polin Monastery. Not long ago, at the end of the 1980s, at great expense, sort of modeled on the Statue of Liberty. And even though, you know, it is a huge tourist attraction and there is a sort of tourist quality about the place, it's an object of veneration. And that's what you feel. About 100 years ago, three monks came to this then very secluded place on Lantau Island to begin to meditate. But this site, Po Lin, has become a very important temple and monastery, very large. Po Lin means precious lotus. And it also has a fabulous vegetarian restaurant. It strikes you that Po Lin is full of life. There's almost a carnival atmosphere with visitors and nuns and monks and wild dogs swirling around, not hushed and reverential like our cathedrals and monasteries. gosh, look at this. This is wild. After a wonderful day in the serene, open spaces of Lantau Island, I am wandering the impossibly crowded, noisy market district, Mongkok. Blocks of narrow streets that are closed off to traffic to make way for hundreds of stalls. And unlike the trendy shops in Central, here, haggling is a must. How much? How much? 139. Okay. How much is okay? Okay, that's the price. Which one? I had 10. How about that? How much is okay? Well, sunglasses. No, no, no. How much okay? 139. 139. 125. 125. So that's. How much okay? 520. That's 21. How much okay? Oh, it's okay. Well, I'm looking now. No, looking. What? How about 10 Hong Kong dollars? How much okay? Well, 10. Huh? 10. Ah. Okay, uh, 80. 80. Okay. Okay, I'll think about that. Okay, 50. I'll th 50? Yeah. 50 Hong Kong, Hong Kong dollars. Yeah. That is like 10 bucks. 10 bucks for these, but yeah. you know, they're just like plastic. I look like fly man in them. 
I, they don't even look good on me. Okay, I have I to find you. a pair that I like. Ten bucks. I'll look. Let me look in one sec. I just have okay, to look at one 40, more thing. 40. Boy, are you tough. Forty. forty. Okay, I don't want to hurt okay, you. Forty. Okay. Forty. Forty. <laughs> The thing that kills you is this goes on like this day, 365 days a year. There's just this circus going on. Yeah, how much? Uh, yeah. 25. 25. Uh, yeah, yeah. 25. Where are you? <laughs> 25. That's like five bucks. Uh, five uh, bucks. Yeah. Very cheap. Uh, Very cheap. Prince of Egypt. Maybe it's in Chinese though. How much? 25. That's it? 25 Hong Kong dollars? It's five bucks. Five bucks. Is it in English or Chinese? English. English. How the Grinch Stole Christmas, The Rock. Oh, Bridget Jones. That was good. How much is Bridget Jones? 25. 25. And if you buy, how much do you get for 100? Four for 100. Four for 100. That's not a bargain. I'm not stupid. I love these. These are cute, eh? Look at these little beaded bags. How much? 69. 69. 14 bucks. They're cute, eh? I think this is Thong City over here. Can you imagine anything tackier than that? Now, not everything, of course, is an item of clothing. You might want to buy yourself a tarantula or a scorpion. Yikes. How much is the tarantula? How much? I guess. A hundred and nine. So, you know, 26, 26 bucks for a dead tarantula. I don't think there's a better bargain in the market. I'm in the wet market in Hong Kong with the fabulous Chef Kwong, who is the head chef at the Tang Court Restaurant, which is number one in my guide. Top 10 Hong Kong, that's his restaurant. That's where we're having the banquet tonight. And we're here to shop for some fresh ingredients. There's no such thing as dead things here. That's the wet market, is it's all still alive. God, everything is moving. <laughs> Look. Oh, these are good? You good crab? <laughs> I always like stuff when it's not moving. We got the shrimps, we got the crab. So we need some veggies. The veggies look gorgeous. I mean, they're just perfectly displayed. Look at those carrots, they're huge. Mega carrots. It is so hot. Yeah, he'll tie it up for you. Obviously, this is a no smoking market. That's great. Look at that. Yeah. Is that how you carry it? It's very cool. That's way better than plastic bags. This is very smart recycling. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god. Okay, we're not in Kansas anymore. It doesn't look like peaches and cream, does it? I thought that was American. <laughs> what I mean? The melon looks good, yeah. I want a Beijing peach. Okay, so we're on the hunt for a Beijing peach, which is apparently a fabulous Beijing, Beijing peach. Yeah. Delicious. And apparently they try and trick you so that you actually see the Air China's cargo sticker to prove that that's really a Beijing peach and not from some other knockoff place. So, and this is so delicious. As good as a Niagara peach. We'll see. Can I eat one now? Is it good? Can I eat it now? Yeah. It looks a little hard. Okay. 
Is it too hard? Good. Delicious. Look at the color of that. Isn't that gorgeous? Chef Kwan and I shopped for the best food for tonight's opening banquet. So here I am on my auspicious date, in my auspicious fiery dress with everyone I've met during my travels. Nevin, my guide, Raymond, my geomancer, Pandora and William from the Tai Chi class, even Phoebe the masseuse have come to my banquet to celebrate the launch of this series. Believe me, as strange as this looks to you, it was even stranger for me. I felt a little like I was stuck in the middle of some cracked out David Lynch movie. Victoria Peaks, perhaps. And, um, I just want to thank you for coming. And I want to toast myself. <laughs> Here's to me, leaving the building and never coming back. Cheers. 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 <laughs> thank you. Condiments there. Bottles in for you if you'd only ask. Oh. I feel like you're on the moon. Well, and it's so. I guess in the travel business, know all that, but I've been based at home for so long. Mm -hmm. And it's thick green. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, that was so great. Am I allowed to kiss you? <laughs> So good, thank you. Despite being a bit hungover from all that green tea the night before, and disappointed by the heavy cloud slash fog slash monsoon rains, I couldn't leave Hong Kong without seeing the number one highlight of the city. get off the tram, believe it or not, I run into fans. Now I am certain they have mistaken me for somebody else. Perhaps the star of a Chinese soap opera. Hello. Hello. How, How are you? you? Uh, are you from Canada? Do you want a picture? Chinese. Well, well, well. Hi, thank you, thank you. So do you live in Canada? <laughs> do you live in Canada no. sometimes? <laughs> I mean, is there any reason you're hugging me? <laughs> As they say on a clear day, you can see forever, or at least to mainland China and Macau, and endless vistas of water and islands and mountains and ships. It's obvious why this is where the very rich insist on living. It definitely is a million dollar view. Well, it's not, not the most perfect day for the view. There's big fog, but the weather here is that kind of wait a minute stuff. If you wait a minute, it can change completely. It could be bright sunshine. But this is the Hong Kong Trail, which is a lovely walk all around the peak. You basically hike very gently. It takes about an hour. The height of the peak and the moody clouds soften the city, and they lend perspective. I've taken Mao's advice, although it wasn't exactly what he was talking about. Mao said, if you want to know the taste of a pear, you must taste the pear by eating it for yourself. All genuine knowledge originates in direct experience. So, travel is a search to find what life is about, 
and there aren't many cities more full of life than Hong Kong. I feel that my joss or luck or good fortune or whatever you want to call it was just to be able to come here in the first place. Do you live in Canada uh, sometimes? <laughs> Is there any reason you're hugging me? <laughs> Did you watch? Perhaps you watched me on television. Yeah, from Fujian. They said that they, for some reason, have watched your program. Ah, they did. 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 They did.